So today our lecture will be about the applications of ion exchange resin. As we already discussed the basics of ion exchange resin. So before we'll move to the applications of ion exchange resin. So what I have tried here, I have drawn the cation exchanger. Now this is our cation exchanger. You could see here the this is the carbon hydrogen backbone or the carbon hydrogen framework in this aromatic ring and this is the active site of the cation exchanger which has a H positive which can get exchanged by some foreign cation and then one side is further and side is further as you could see here that CH2 C it is it, this structure this is basically uh, it's a monomer of uh, styrene and if you look at this one this and this portion this is a monomer of divinyl benzene so basically these are the two components that are present in the you know the ion exchangers that's the the, the, the the styrene and divinyl benzene so they basically they're the frameworks of benzene this uh, divinyl benzene and styrene so this is the cation exchange resin and same is the case here we have the anion exchange resin i have shown here through our wavered pattern this basically the extensive framework of CH, CH, CH2 kind of bonds and then we have here some divinyl benzene, styrene, divinyl benzene, styrene and I have shown here for the simplicity this is the active site amine where we have OH ions which can be replaced by it can be exchanged with some anion like chloride, bromide, iodide, whatever we need and same is the case here so these are the two active sites now we'll move to the application portion for application one is that the softening of hot water now before we start the softening of hard water, but hard water means that when we have the excess concentration of ions like calcium, magnesium and their chlorides, their sulfates, bicarbonate and so on. So that's called a hard water, fine. So we have to make this soft and that means we have to remove those ions and we have to you know, decrease their concentration inside the uh, water sample. So that will be called as the softening. That means you remove the excess concentration of calcium, uh, magnesium, you know, uh, particularly their chlorides and sulfates. So what we do is that for the purpose, I will make a column here. So that will be easy for understanding. So this is a column. This is some sort of a knob from here, fine. So this column, let us pack this with cation exchanger, this one, this cation exchanger. So we'll pack this with the cation exchanger. You can pack this manually. Now we have the columns available ready-made in different instruments like ion exchange chromatograph. We can do this in the lab also, the resin is available in the market. So these are the active sites. So in the cation exchanger there, maybe sulfonic acid here. Let's take the example of SO3H. So these are the active sites. Fine, so these are column packed. Now we have our water sample which is a hard water. I will keep it here. This is a hard water. By hard water, we to see it contains the excess of calcium, magnesium. So, magnesium there, chloride, sulfate, and so on. It can be even bicarbonate, fine. Can be even bicarbonate, and so on. It's called hard water. Fine. So what we'll do before we'll remove these ions or we'll remove this calcium magnesium concentration or reduce the concentration of this inside in the water. So this column which was packed with the cation exchanger. So this cation exchanger I will show by the cation exchanger I will show by this. That is I uh, can show it like this. It is R S. So R means the material which is we have and S means the sulfonic acid group that's the active site. So that so what will we first load this column with the sodium? 
Fine. So what we'll do, we'll pour the sodium hydroxide over it. See, we'll pour it with a concentrated sodium hydroxide so that the OH, the, uh, the sodium ion that will actually replace this H positive. So it will become sodium sulfonate based. So it becomes. So our reason will be R N E. Fine. So this is our reason which is in the column now. So it is loaded with our column is loaded with the sodium. Fine. So this is our column that we will use for softening of hot water. And then we'll take our solution which has excess calcium, magnesium and these ions and pour it here. So once we will pour it here now, what will happen? Since we are adding calcium ions, so we have calcium ions competing for this RNA. So they will replace this RNA. That will replace the sodium ions from the site. And it results in RCA. Fine, so they will result in RC. So again, we'll go to the board here so that you can directly see it from here. Fine, so we'll look again. So, what we have done is please see here. So, I have taken the reason that's RS and then I have treated that with the calcium. Fine, so we have RS with N, it becomes RNA, and then we'll pour our sample with over it. Fine. So, the calcium and magnesium ions are present in the hard water. Fine. So, they're present in the hard water. And uh, so, when we treat this, we have RCA. Or if it is magnesium, if it is magnesium, since magnesium is also there. So accordingly, we'll be having RMG. So some of the sites will be occupied by calcium because their size is similar. They're alkaline earth metals. So they'll do their interactions. Same with the active site. So we are uh, now, when we pour our sample, water sample, or the column, so the sites will be having now RCA and RMG. Fine. Now, then what we do, so the water sample, which, which water comes out from here, if we collect that water, it will be having either we are, uh, no concentration of calcium and magnesium, or you can say very minimal concentrations of this calcium and magnesium. Rather, the, the things which come out, there will be sodium salts of sulfate, the sodium salts of chloride, sodium salts of bicarbonate and so on. So this way we have, we could actually remove the calcium and magnesium salts from this uh, calcium magnesium sulfates, calcium magnesium chloride, calcium magnesium bicarbonate from our sample. So the sample is said to be soft and so it's called a soft water fine. Now we can regenerate this back, we have to use this again and again. This we can regenerate by, so regeneration can be done by regeneration of our resin so that can be done by pouring brine solution or called sodium chloride fine concentrated solution of sodium chloride so we have our calcium magnesium so with resin R if we pour this with sodium chloride so that we get our resin back fine so you will get the sodium loaded resin that was RNA plus we'll get calcium chloride and magnesium chloride so that will come down fine so now our region is regenerated back so we can use this again and again again I will show it here diagrammatically so we had a resin we loaded that with first with the calcium at those active sites and then we have our water sample which contains concentration of magnesium calcium and there these salts once we pour that here, we could see that these ions are getting replaced by sodium. No, sorry, the sodium salts are getting replaced by calcium and magnesium. And the water which comes out that is free from these ions becomes soft water. And the ion can regenerate by adding concentrated sodium chloride solution. And then you have regenerated your 
call them back and you can use it again and again for this making soft water fine so this is application number one now there's a question that why calcium is competing for magnesium for that purpose we have to understand that just here very simply sodium ion and calcium ion for understanding sodium ion is a smaller size its solution of water it has a strong interaction with the water because it forms a hydrate large hydrate at here it's very important while as calcium it is size is smaller so its size is larger so its hydrated shell will be less fine so its hydrated shell will be more it's more that means when you pour uh, this interaction of sodium so its size is very large interaction of sodium with the active sites is less interaction of calcium with the active sites is more so when we loaded first with the sodium so it uh, there was no competition with any other ions so it uh, easily occupied the sites the moment we added calcium so there is more interaction with the sites because of its smaller size so easily replaces the ones now if we have to replace calcium by sodium then we have to use a high concentration of sodium then all it is possible we can actually present it back so that's basically the reason for the activity behavior because of calcium is a larger size hydrated cell is less and sodium is a bigger hydrated cell size becomes more fine so this is all about now the application number two application number two is the deionization deionization of water this is the main application deionization of water so by deionization as word reflects the removing of ions from the water it's, it could also be called as demineralization fine now in this purpose what we do is that we have to remove ions from the water so we'll use our rhythm which is uh, this one so we are not using any sodium form of resin we are using this resin this is our resin cation exchanger so this is our resin so it has H sites you see it here R R H2 I am saying H2 because we have di this ions which are divalent so for that purpose should R2H so that can be treated with our water sample let's take the same water sample it has calcium chloride magnesium chloride so deionization means here we have to remove ions like chloride also bicarbonate also and then sulfate also at the same time we have to remove calcium also magnesium also so we we'll should like this calcium magnesium it is in the form of chloride sulfate um, bicarbonate SCO3 fine so we'll treat this with this is uh, they will, these H sites they'll replace it by calcium and magnesium so those H sites they'll be replaced by calcium and magnesium and then magnesium and whatever number of sites are there so we'll get so we'll get R I'll show it like this we have R here and then we have calcium at that side magnesium fine so it's like uh, the exercise becomes like this when we pour our sample in this case this is our sample water sample where we have these ions we have to remove all the ions in the previous case it was we have to remove the concentration of calcium and magnesium so when we pour the sample here so we have this kind of phenomena so the water which comes out it contains now chloride chloride it contains sulfate it contains bicarbonate so the anions are getting removed and this column is packed with these ions fine now so this is step number one so this was the step number one step number one now the step number two so in the step number two <coughs> Uh, this will use uh, the concentrated will pass through that ion exchange bed which is loaded now with calcium and magnesium will pass sulfuric acid so the um, now first we'll uh, now this water I will talk about this water is uh, it has been removed the calcium has been removed from here now this same sample of water will take it I will pass this over the anion exchange bed now this so 
what which has opportunities now and nines now it's passed to i9 exchange bed because the nines could be removed to ni exchange sites here so i will show it like this so we'll show it like this so we have our r this is our i9 exchanger r o h n9 exchanger Right, R O H. So, and uh, now we can see since water is there, so that will become HCl, that will become carbonic acid, it will become sulfuric acid. Fine. So that's treated with these ions, which may be in the form of H2SO4, maybe in the form of chloride or HCl, and uh, so it becomes HCl. It can be carbonic acid because carbonic acid will get easily dissociated. Fine, it's not a problem. So show these two, and then it forms R at the sites here. Sulfate. These are the basic ions present in chloride. So there will be R, and then we have sulfate and chloride. And these are the hydrogen ions, so they will easily get through the solvent. So that will result in the form of water, H plus OH. So now our, uh, this anion exchange bed that is loaded with these ions and the water which comes out, it is no ion. So the water which comes out now is free from even chloride, it's free from sulfate, fine. And that uh, it is, uh, no, free from whatever, it's free from anything. So the first step when we pass the same water to the cation exchanger, we remove calcium and magnesium. In the next step we pass through the anion exchanger and through this reaction we can actually get the water which is free from any of the ions. Thus, we can see that the ion is present in the water got removed. So the water is had to be deionized. And then if you have to regenerate the, our column back, that simply this column can be regenerated. So uh, this, uh, the column which contains this uh, ions, that can be easily regenerated by, as we already know, that if you have a nine exchange column, we can use concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide to remove it. It will replace these ions and then we have the this ion exchanger back. And if we have to regenerate the cation exchanger column that we know we have to use the concentrated HCl or concentrated sodium uh, HCl or sulfuric acid. This is all about the diagram. We have to go it back here. On the right side we have the cation exchanger and we have the anion exchanger. Application number one softening of hard water. So we take our resin, load this with the sodium so over that and then the sites will be occupied by the sodium so that's our reason RNA now that is now RNA is, then we have water sample pour it so we pour the water sample over that so these sites are occupied by the calcium because they have some other size better affinity so now the water which comes out is free from these ions and all these are ions so uh, calcium is removed from this as means the water has to be soft and fine it's application number one and then if we have to regenerate this we can use is a cation exchanger we can use sulfuric acid or HCl. Application number two. So this is the phenomena for using again. We can load this back with concentrated sodium chloride. For for the second application of deionization of water. So what we'll do. So our anion exchanger, this one. So that is your anion exchanger. So the anion for the deionization, the, the first step will use the same column, but without being loaded with the sodium. As it gets replaced by calcium, magnesium, we'll get the the ions which have been removed through this column, and the, the water which comes out that contains these ions. Now that water sample is poured over the column that contains the anion exchanger. So the sites are replaced by chloride is sealed so in this way the water comes it free from any ion so now if you have to regenerate this column we can use sulfuric acid and we know if you have to regenerate the cation exchanger we have to use uh, so if you regenerate the anion exchanger column then you have to use the uh, sodium hydroxide and if you have to regenerate the cation exchanger column then we have to use sulfuric acid or HCl so this is all about the application part of the ion exchange resin Hope this is enough. If you have questions and queries, then you can contact me at the email provided. So this is all for the day.